Yeah. Mr. Fushi, are you ready? Mr. Kush, are you ready? Thank you. Welcome everyone to Township Council meeting, Monday, October 25th, 2021. This meeting is now called to order. Councilman Venturi, lead us in the flag salute, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. Mrs. Krause, please read the statement of public notice. Take notice that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with NJSA 10.4-8 and NJSA 10.4-10 as follows. Notice of the meeting was prominently posted on the bulletin board at the municipal building located at 225 Main Street, Little Falls, New Jersey on July 22nd, 2021. A copy of the notice is mailed to the North Jersey Herald and News on the Record on the same date. Additionally, a copy of the notice is filed in the office of the township clerk on said date. This meeting is being conducted under the circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 health situation. Only 25 members of the public will be allowed to attend the meeting in person. A link and a telephone number to join the meeting virtually can be accessed on the township website at www.lfnj.com. Electronic provisions have been established for the public to participate during the public comment portion of the meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Krause. At this time, please call the roll. Council Member Havlitz. Present. Council Member Kawadi. Present. Council Member Sieber. Present. Council Member Vanchieri. Present. Council President Scoba. Present. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the September 27, 2021 and the meeting of October 4, 2021. If there's no objection from the councils to do both uh, <clears throat> minutes and one motion, uh, can I have a motion for that? So moved. Moved by Council Member Kawadi. Second. I'm sorry. Council President, because there's uh, two sets of different council members who were here on one meeting and another meeting, you should take those both separately. Okay. Even though, Councilor, uh, you have to be present, even though they read the minutes to the meeting, you still have to be present it at should, those meetings. It should be the okay. ones that were present. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> That would be it's just possible. Better. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. We're okay. if you were muted. Let me know what's going on. So, what's the story? We're good. It was muted. We're good now. Yeah, let me. Let me. Uh, okay. So, the, before you start. No problem. So the screens are dark. So we still can people see us? Okay. And the individuals can hear us, correct? Okay, Council Member Happel, take it from the top. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry. sorry. I'd like to congratulate. Back. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <clears throat> so we have to go back to approving the minutes. Yep. We're muted that far back. Wasn't it recorded? It was recorded, no? Right. And, and it was recorded, right? We are being recorded. Yeah. Right? So, okay. So for the uh, public, I'm sorry uh, that we're having such uh, problems with our video. The minutes uh, of the meeting of September 27th and October 4th were approved by the council members. It has been recorded. Uh, Councilman Hablitz, uh, council member Hablitz is now going to continue with her report. So if you'd start from the beginning. I'm sorry for that. Sure. Uh, so thank you, Council President. So I was sharing that I have some great news about the library receiving a grant. Uh, they received a grant to um, help them with English as a second language. Uh, the Little Falls Library uh, and from the state of New Jersey that will fund the purchase of additional computer equipment and upgrade its technology so that volunteers can be trained to teach English to non-native speakers 
with the assistance of the Literary Volunteers of America of Essex and Passaic County. Um, I was saying if anyone is interested in volunteering, they can contact the uh, Little Falls Library Director at 973-256-2784 or contact uh, Kristen Bloomberg by email at bloomberg at littlefallslibrary.org. I said I would also like to thank the library staff and the board of trustees for helping with this process. I would also like to thank the library staff for all that they do and all of the events that they bring to town. Uh, recently, they were at the farmer's market for a pumpkin painting event for the children that was held last week. It was a great event. Hold up. Excuse me. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Um, I think there were approximately 100 children. It was really a great success. The library just does so much for us. Um, for our seniors in town, the library has been hosting Medicare workshops for the past couple of weeks. There will be one again tomorrow night at 630. It helps our seniors to navigate Medicare and Medicare replacement products. So it's really interesting if, if you want to go before you do any um, updates for your insurance for 2022, they might have some good advice for you at the Medicare workshop. And lastly, I just want to say with flu season coming, um, the Clifton Health Department is holding a flu vaccination clinic. Um, the dates will be Monday, October 18th and 19th, which already actually passed. Uh, Tuesday, October 26th, uh, which is tomorrow from 9 to 12 p.m., Monday, November 8th from 2 to 5 p.m., and Tuesday, November 16th from 9 to 12 at the uh, Clifton City Hall, which is located on Clifton Avenue in Clifton. Uh, so the clinic is a walk-up site, and you must wear your mask and social distance at all times, but it is free, so you can attend. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Council Member Abbots. <clears throat> Council Member Vincheri, the floor is yours. Thanks, Council President. Um, first and foremost, let's hope uh, this storm that's pending, that's going to hit us sometime tonight and tomorrow, is not a repeat performance of what happened on September 1st with Ida. So uh, I know people are texting, calling, and emailing throughout the day asking what to do. Mayor, I'm sure you're going to get into it, but you know, people are asking, you know, if they can remove. Um, move their cars to higher ground, what are some of the locations, whether it's the Civic Center, the library, or um, the Morris Canal. So that's coming up and even school two has come up. Um, but let's hope that uh, nothing bad happens with this storm that's coming through. Uh, a few updates from me. Um, just wanted to let everybody know on Thursday, November 11th at 11 a.m. at Wilmore Road Park, uh, the American Legion Post 108 will hold their annual Veterans Day ceremony. All are, of course, welcome to attend. Again, that's uh, Thursday, November 11th at 11 a.m. at Wilmore Road Park, the Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, a couple other things that I'm working on from a transportation standpoint is, and Mayor, I sent you a, a draft today. I pulled together a letter. I had met with a resident last week on Pleasant Avenue who was looking to see if we could consider adding a stop sign on the corner of Mozart and Pleasant. Um, I let her know that, you know, we can look into this and that we'll send a letter to the residents on both Mozart and uh, Pleasant Avenue just to make sure they're aware of the idea of possibly putting an ordinance together to add a stop sign. So I sent that to you. And if you can get that out and have the DPW drop it off, say sometime this week to the residents on Pleasant and Mozart would be great. And if we get any feedback, yay or nay, we can move forward with that. Um, the other thing I'm working on with the mayor and um, H2M is just trying to coordinate our meeting with the residents on Jacobus to have our follow-up meeting about the speed hump schedules. The last few weeks have been a little crazy for everyone, but we're hoping to nail that down um, possibly this weekend just to finalize the speed hump plans on Jacobus because we already have Van Pelt ready to go, but we want to just do both at the same time. So if we can get that nailed down this weekend, it would be great. Um, that's it for me. Thank you, Council Member Vincheri. Council Member Siever, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. So um, it was great. We had our Municipal Alliance meeting this past week. The group is coming together um, after taking a, a small break. Um, thank you to the mayor for appointing Andrea Marchesani. Um, she's going to do a great job, and um, we're looking to bring some great events and knowledge um, based off the of Municipal Alliance to our town. And then um, uh, Councilwoman Hablitz mentioned about the farmer's market and the library with the pumpkin painting. 
um, we did this past weekend I actually have a dog costume contest at the market, which was really cute and great. And we had several winners. Um, we had around 20 dogs enter the contest. So it was a, a lot of fun. And then this coming Sunday, uh, which is actually Halloween at the market, we're going to be doing trick or treating. So children or adults, if they like, can go ahead and trick or treat at all our vendors. And then we're also going to have pumpkin painting again, as well as kind of like a little pumpkin pick picking so you can either take a pumpkin or you can also paint it if you wish and that is this coming this coming sunday that is all i have for tonight thank you <clears throat> council member kawadi what was yours thank you council president um just want to once again as domestic violence awareness month is coming to a close uh express my appreciation for the volunteers of the committee they uh, put up purple ribbons around town we had the town hall lit up purple um, and they uh, had a presence at the farmer's market and the Little Falls Biz Fall Festival, just making sure people that they were out there for people who might need their um, advice on how to uh, reach out to resources that are available to people who are suffering from domestic violence. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, this is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I'm wearing pink to honor that and uh, offer my support to <clears throat> victims, uh, families, and survivors of that illness. Uh, from the Little Falls schools front, um, the US News and World Report came out. Little Falls school number one was ranked number 56 out of 715 schools in New Jersey, and Little Falls school ranked number 72 out of 1,370 schools. So I want to offer my congratulations to them. Uh, we're all very proud of the, the school district that we have. And, and the work that they're doing. The um, Clifton Health Department, I don't know if it's rabies season per se, but the Clifton Health Department is having a rabies clinic, which is available uh, free at the DPW garage at 307 East 7th Street in Clifton. It could be 7th Ave, it doesn't say on this flyer, uh, but it's 307 East 7th, and that will be on Wednesday, November 17th from 5 to 7 p.m. and Saturday, November 20th, from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, the dogs must be on leashes. This is a drive-through clinic. No one, dogs must be on leashes. No one under the age of 18 will be allowed without an adult. You must have a valid form of identification. And it's actually available to all New Jersey residents. So uh, if your dog is not up to date on its rabies shots, I suggest that you take advantage of that. Um, and lastly, uh, Councilwoman Hablitz mentioned the grant that the library uh, was awarded. I was um, happy to have gotten involved with that through a request of a personal favor. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was a really, it's a really great thing for our community um, and actually for communities around. We, we're going to benefit uh, by um, having some technology upgrades and computers and people from the outside can come in and uh, get these English as second language lessons uh, from volunteers. So it's a win-win all around, and, and I was happy to be involved. And that's thank it. you. Thank you, Council Member Thank you. Um, I want to thank the residents who are joining us this evening uh, in person as well as on uh, video. Uh, going home this evening, it was really enlightening to see Wilmore Park, the trees, how well they were lit up. I was really impressed. Um, it gives you a sense of enlightening, enlightenment um, to see some lighted trees in a park, especially when it gets dark early. Uh, I thought that was a very good endeavor, Mayor. I'm sure the council fully, fully, uh, fully supports that. Uh, in your report, Mayor, if you would talk uh, to us about 1428, why you want the council to approve that. Um, also, um, the we're moving forward uh, with the Memorial Tree Program, which is a program where residents can donate, uh, give 700, not donate, but give $750 to the township in someone's memory, uh, there'll be a tree as well as a bronze plaque that we'll have in memory of in the person's name. We have three, ap three um, applications and the bronze plaques are being made up as we speak. Uh, we have grid out the areas where we will start to plant the trees. We'll see if we can get the trees planted this uh, in the next few weeks. If not, they'll, they'll occur in the spring. The senior advisory is gonna have an exciting program called the Street Secret Lives of Trees. And Kwadi is going to host this program. It's going to be on November 17th at the Civic Center at 12:30 in the afternoon. 
Those that want to attend, please contact the Civic Center or contact the Rec, rec Center and tell them that you'll be attending. Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. Out of the gate, I'd like to address the uh, current flood watch that's in effect for Passaic County and many surrounding uh, counties in, in the area. Uh, any residents who have concerns about moving vehicles now uh, can do so. They can utilize the Mars Canal parking lot and move vehicles there temporarily uh, in the event you're looking to move your vehicle to higher ground. Uh, I will say that the Peckman River has uh, almost never been in a cleaner state. Uh, it has been cleaned from bank to bank and the uh, lower portions have been removed and brought to the side. So it is as wide and as low as it has been uh, in, in a very, very long time. Uh, I am pleased to report that Cedar Grove is also working on cleaning and widening the river and their section of the river. Uh, and I have spoken to Cedar Grove recently who have uh, committed for the future years uh, in assisting with some bank stabilization through Cedar Grove, which is also something that uh, we are looking to do here locally in Little Falls uh, moving forward. Um, that said, there is, as I indicated, a flood watch. There's also a wind advisory, not in Passaic County currently as of 6 p.m., but in some of the surrounding uh, counties. So just be uh, aware of the potential for high winds and some of the issues that that brings. Uh, be safe during the storm. Uh, again, if there are warning sirens, please heed the warnings. Please get, get out uh, you know, before uh, the, the waters rise if you're in one of the flash flood areas. Uh, before I get into uh, the ordinances this evening, I do have uh, a couple of uh, proclamations that I would like to read having to do with Fire Prevention Month as well as National First Responders Day. Uh, and the first one is the Fire Prevention Month Proclamation, which reads, whereas Fire Prevention Week this year falls between October 3rd and October 9th, and the theme is learn the sound of fire safety. And whereas fire is a serious public safety issue and resident homes are at great risk for fires. And whereas smoke alarms can alert you of danger in the event of a fire in which you have as little as two minutes to escape safely. And whereas first responders are dedicated to the safety and well being of our residents, now therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Little Falls Township Council, do hereby proclaim October 3rd through October 9th, 2021, as Fire Prevention Week in the Township of Little Falls. The second reading this evening for a proclamation is the National First Responders Day. And it reads Whereas National First Responders Day is recognized on October 28th, and is a time to honor the men and women who make it their mission to take action when disaster strikes. And whereas we celebrate those who are first to run towards a crisis and dedicate their lives to saving others. And whereas we pay tribute to the many hours around the clock these individuals give to our community. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Little Falls Township Council, do hereby proclaim October 28, 2021, as National First Responders Day in the Township of Little Falls. And it is very fitting that the two ordinances that are on the agenda this evening uh, have to do with our first responders here in Little Falls. Uh, the first being Ordinance 1417, which is the ordinance regarding our fire division and fire department. And I am going to ask that the council table this one more time to November 8th, at which time I'm going to ask that the council then uh, adopt uh, finally, the ordinance regarding our fire division here in Little Falls to give us an opportunity just to finalize it with the fire department before it is uh, adopted by this council. The second ordinance this evening is Ordinance 1428. Ordinance 1428 is an ordinance which creates a new position here in Little Falls, the deputy chief position in our police department. And I want it to be clear that I understand residents' concerns of adding brass and costs that come with that in municipalities. I also want it to be clear that this is not a step to add brass to increase taxpayer dollars to the Township of Little Falls. This is an ordinance that is being, that I'm asking that this council introduce and adopt for future planning purposes. And what I mean by that is this. Uh, I recently was advised of some sad news, I'll call it, by our, our Chief Steve Post, who has advised me of his intentions to retire uh, at the end of next year. 
And in that transition period leading up to the end of next year, uh, there are a lot of things that I think should and could be done to continue to keep our police department moving in a positive direction, continuing with its accreditation and all of these great things that have been started under Chief Post. And in order to do that, as many of our police officers have, uh, they have a, a number of months that in which they have accumulated over their 25 or 30 years of service in which they have enough days that they're able to take a whole bunch of days off without being physically present, um, but while still being on the books here in Little Falls. And there is going to be a period of time while well, where Chief Post remains the chief of this department on paper, but will not be physically present in the building. And in order to, again, facilitate a smooth transition into our next chief, uh, it is my request that this council introduce an assistant uh, deputy chief position in which the deputy chief who will act as the chief during that period of time or will be the highest officer within this police department for that period of time to continue to allow this department to continue to make its progress. I want this to also be clear that this is not a position that I believe that needs to be filled 365 days a year, every single year. And I say that much like we, like, like I asked this council to a, a, amend the ordinance recently to allow for a ninth sergeant. And I say that because very similarly, the ninth sergeant position is a position that was created by this council with the intentions of if there is a sergeant who is retiring, who is active on the books, but no longer active in person here in the building, it allows us to still have eight sergeants on the road to fill all of our shifts to allow for there to be structure within the department and within each shift. Similarly, this position of deputy chief is one that will again allow this department to continue to move forward. Uh, while we do have a chief still on the books, but no longer here with us in person every single day in the building. Uh, so it is for that reason that I asked this council to uh, introduce and eventually adopt ordinance 1428 that will create the position of deputy chief. It will allow for the department to have structure and stability moving forward, uh, and it will allow for uh, our police department to maintain and to continue to pursue uh, all of the great things that they have done, including the accreditations and all of those things during that period of time. Are there any questions? Yeah, Mayor. So just to be clear, your intention is only to fill this position while the chief is out on permanent leave and then and then not fill it, not backfill it once the person get once someone gets promoted to chief. That's correct. That's are we on here? Okay, yeah, that's correct. That's my intention is to, uh, again, have this position filled during the period of time where the chief is, again, on the books, but uh, not here in person within the building. Uh, and after the new chief is then appointed, uh, what would then happen is that position would not be filled again, short of there being another uh, retirement of a chief, in which, in which case they have a period of time. Again, much like the ninth sergeant position, exactly what you said. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, well, uh, when we get to you, open. Yes. But some, maybe someday you'll run for a public office and you'll be sitting up here and you won't have to do that. But at this time, you just have to wait a little bit. Uh, Council Wenzel, do you have anything for this governing body? No, Council President, thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Kucha, best practices, would you like to explain? Thank you, Council President. Uh, annually, we are required to file a best practices inventory with the Division of Local Government. Uh, we did that uh, within the time frame that was provided. I am here to report to you that we've met our core competencies, scoring 22 points out of 24, uh, and uh, in the areas of financial administration, personnel, budgeting, and transparency, as well as shared services. So uh, we've met the requirements of the state, and uh, we can go one more year. State aid will be in our hands when it's appropriate. Are there any questions, comments from council members? Okay. If uh, no. <clears throat> Mayor, anything you want to comment on best practices? Other than to say that, uh, you know, I believe that the best practices certainly hold municipalities and cities accountable uh, to ensure that the uh, best practices are met to the residents every single year. I think this is a good checklist that certainly keeps municipalities in check uh, and something I always encourage. And I'm pleased to see that we have 
met the uh, at least by by far the minimum best practice standards and uh, uh, you know again something that we will continue to do each and every year. Thank you. I have a motion uh, to open to the uh, open to the public for uh, agenda items only. So moved. So moved by Council Member Vancheri. Second. Second by Council Member uh, Kawadi. All those in favor to move to the public for agenda items only, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed that motion, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Mrs. Krause. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the Council President. Please give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate. You may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the council president. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comment shall raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. The meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the council president will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Please give your name and address for the record. Once the process is complete, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you. The floor is now open. Louis Fernandez, 54 Harrison Street. Good evening. How are you? Um, I, wanna, I, I was wondering if somebody can explain resolution D which calls for an addition, additional $5,500 for the rec center. I wonder what, but he doesn't say what the money is gonna be right. used for. Right, so you wanna know what the additional charge of $5,500 right. was for our rec center gymnasium floor. Mr. Cuscio, can you explain why we have to spend $5,500 more? Uh, when they were installing the floor, uh, there were some things that were unforeseen with regard to the subfloor and it had to be fixed before we can put the, the rest of the floor. So when they did it, they were unaware of some yes. something that was under the current floor that correct ended up costing us more money. Yes. Hence, Mr. Fernandez, in construction, as you know, if you ever did any project in your house, I know I have done many. It seems like whenever you get a price, it's never the price. And even when you get the additional price, that's not the price. So, um, and I don't mean to prestige those in the construction field, but you know, that unfortunately happens. Okay, the, uh, the second question is um, the deputy, the uh, new position, the uh, deputy yes. of police that you're asking for, uh, Mr. Mayor, what will his salary be? Will his salary be equal to the chief of police since he's doing the job while well, he's not here? So now they ask the question, one of the things that, and one of the other reasons why I believe that the deputy chief position is beneficial to the town is because it will move this individual outside of the regular bargaining unit that the uh, the rest of the uh, members of the police department are in. What that means is, is that that contract is to be negotiated still at this time uh, until the position is created, the contract is not negotiated. So I do not know right now what that salary will be. Will that salary be public? Of course, every salary is public. Okay, and uh, all right. Um, and like you said, that position will be eliminated once um, a, a, a chief of police is picked. No, I did not say it would be eliminated. I said it. I said it's my intention not to refill that position. But it's not going to be eliminated. The position will remain in perpetuity. It need, but but nobody will. It's not my intention to ever appoint anybody into once, that once position. Once the new chief, correct? Once the new chief takes. Correct. And until, and it's my intention that until that chief, two years, 10 years, 25 years from now, decides that it's their intention to retire, it's my belief. And I'm not going to be mayor in 25 years, but, and uh, at that point, if, you know, that, that next mayor then decides to fill that position, that's up to them. All right. But in the meantime, it will be. That's my intention. It's correct. All right. Um, I was going to ask questions about uh, Ordinance uh, 1417. But since it has been postponed, I think it's only fair that I uh, thank you. Appreciate I postpone that. my questions too. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Kucha, is there anyone on? Uh... Someone on Zoom that wishes to be heard. Right. Okay. Can I have a motion to close the public comment. So moved. Second. 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 Um, was moved by Councilmember Quarty. Second by Councilmember Siever. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. Have a motion to approve the consent agenda. 
So moved. Move. Moved by Council Member uh, Seaver, second by Council Member Hablitz. Are there any questions or comments concerning the consent agenda before we vote on it? Mrs. Krause, call the roll on the consent agenda. Council Member Hablitz? Yes. Council Member Kawadi? Yes. Council Member Seaver? Yes. Council Member Venturi? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. So as we know, 1417 has been postponed to November 8th. So we will move to uh, Mrs. Krause, please read ordinance 1428. Introduction of ordinance number 1428 and ordinance entitled, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Little Fall Administration of Government, section 3-7.7 .7, with a second reading and public hearing scheduled for November 22nd, 2021. I have a motion to introduce ordinance 1428. So moved. Moved by council member Kowadi, second by council member Van Cherry, Mrs. Krause, call the roll to introduce ordinance 1428. Council Member Havlitz? Yes. Council Member Kowadi? Yes. Council Member Seaver? Yes. Council Member Van Cherry? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. I have a motion to open the meeting to public general matters. So moved. moved by Council Member Van Cherry. Second. Second by Council Member Havlitz. All those in favor to open for general matters, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed this motion, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Mrs. Krause, please read the public comment. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the Council President. Please give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate, you may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the Council President. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comment shall raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. The meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the council president will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Please give your name and address for the record. Once the process is complete, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Barone, the floor is yours. Your name and address, please. Good evening, everyone. Tom Barone, uh, 26 Beaumont Terrace here in Little Falls. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Go ahead, sir. Great. Um, I just wanted to ask a question, and, and I'm going to get there in a minute. I just got to get to it for a sec. Um, long story short, the Little Falls Historic Society recently procured, they came upon and procured um, a really amazing map of Little Falls from 1915. That's 1-5. One um, it's a color, original copy of a map, and it's, it's really stunning. So I, I own Falls Creamery on Patterson Ave, um, and I wanted to see my building on there. So I thought I'd give it a look. And what I was surprised to find was that Patterson Ave um, at that time wasn't called Patterson Ave. It was actually called Little Falls Turnpike. Uh, and Little Falls Turnpike used to run from Main Street all the way to the border of Patterson, I guess down by the Hillary Street Bridge, somewhere down that way. Um, and it's only through some funny act of vengeance that Little Falls ended up changing the name to Patterson Ave after Wes Patterson changed their section to McBride. It's just kind of a silly little story. And as kind of a, you know, a gesture, if you will, to, to Woodland Park back then, Wes Patterson, we changed our portion to Patterson Ave, almost as if we were skipping over uh, Wes Patterson to, to just say we're right next to Patterson. It was, it was kind of a little dig on, on Wes Patterson at the time. Anyway, that's the long, silly story. Um, all I wanted to ask is how would one like myself um, suggest or, or propose that we consider that as a potential name change uh, for that section for Patterson Ave from Main Street to where it hits on 46, which is actually a really short street. Um, it just seemed to me that the timing of everything going on, we have, we have a lot of great development down that way, um, that, that fun piece of, you know, I don't know if it's approved or proposed, but that Maple Patterson Ave triangle that we're working on um, new buildings going up. It just seemed like maybe an ideal time to have that conversation. And I had no idea. Uh, I know I had mentioned this to some of you casually. I had no idea what the formal process would be to suggest such a change. Um, but Little Falls Turnpike is what it used to be called. And I think that has a great ring to being, you know, the, the main thoroughfare into our town off of the main highway past our town. Um, so it was just a thought that I thought I'd, I'd throw out there. Well, thank you for joining us this evening and bringing us some enlightening uh, enlightenment to uh, the fact of how Patterson Avenue came about. And I'm glad that the Historical Society found a map that dates back to 1915. Uh, Councilor, would you want to comment on how a road gets changed? I know roads get cha changed in towns before. 
Yeah, I think that the mayor, uh, I, I was looking at the mayor and I think he may have come up with the same answer, which is what I came up with, which is I believe, and the mayor obviously knows his town so much better than I do, that uh, that is a county roadway. So therefore, uh, while it is a very valid and meaningful request, uh, that request would have to be made to the county to stay through our now county commissioners. Um, and uh, that, that request would have to go down to them at 401 Grand. And uh, I believe they have uh, the process uh, available up there should they choose to enact it of uh, passing a, uh, an ordinance to change a street name. Uh, that's totally within their purview. I believe, and uh, the mayor will correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that uh, Patterson Ave from the Woodland Park order to uh, Maine is all county road. Mayor, you have anything else you'd like to add to the conversation about Patterson Ave? The only thing I'd like to add is that one of my favorite parts about being mayor is not Mr. Barone necessarily, but some of the old timers like to come up to me and give me some fun facts about Little Falls and things that used to be uh, 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago. And I always find these fun facts about Little Falls intriguing. And I, I love to hear the history of Little Falls. Um, this is certainly something that you know, I, I, I think I'd be happy to broach with the, the county, see where they stand on this and to see if there's something that I may be considered in this regard moving forward. So uh, happy to touch base with the county on this and see if we can make some headway on this potential. Do the council members have anything they'd like to add or comment concerning Mr. Barone's comments about Patterson Ave? Mr. Barone, has your question been answered, sir? It has, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I do. Thank you for joining and, us. And by the way, uh, Council President, just, just to share your sentiment, I also like the lights on one more. I think it looks great. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, thank you for joining us. Is there anyone else that would like to have any questions or comments during this public session? Yes, Mr. Fernandez, you can take your time. Yes. Um, one of the things that I keep seeing over and over, and is uh, in tonight's um, agenda. If you look on the second page, it says consent agenda. Correct. And there's quite a few things. The municipal clerk's report for the month of September, the tax collector's report, the recreation center report, the civic center report, the police department report, quite a few of them. Nobody ever talks about them. Everybody approves them. No. Mm -hmm. So what are they there for? Just to occupy space? To uh, waste things? Or, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Fernandez, the council members along with the mayors get the, get the full reports in their packet, all the data to the, each one of those and reports. the public is not allowed to? I'm sorry, sir? The public, we're not entitled to a um, that report? Well, let me just finish my comment for a second. I'll just, okay. So we get in, in these entire reports. If you notice, when we go to consent agenda, I do ask the council for any comments or questions regarding, that's part of what the council studies once they get the agenda reports, which is generally released at the same time uh, when the public gets it, usually on a Thursday night or a Friday. And throughout the weekend, they study this, they look it over. Uh, and sometimes if there is a question, they'll call myself or they'll call the mayor one-to-one. -one, that's totally legal to answer those questions. There's no issue there. But generally they're self-explanatory and they're just reports that uh, they are reviewed, which are, you know, it's mandatory that we know what's going on in the town. No, now, as no. far as your questioning, should the public have access to these reports? <laughs> Um, councilors, is there an issue with reports? Mayor, council members, do anybody have issues if the council me members were to get the same reports that we get? The, the, these are just in general, these reports are public records. They are. Uh, so how come they're not being published? Mm -hmm. I think they just have to be. They just have to be asked for. I don't know that they're not. Not, it is it is a lot of paperwork. I will tell you that at some time. Some of these reports are I, quite I'm lengthy, not denying it. But, I'm not, uh, but I keep seeing it, and nobody mm -hmm. ever says a, a thing. Nobody ever questions anything. No. So I was wondering, what is there for? Mm -hmm. Well, they're, again, sir, I'll reiterate. They're there for the council to know what is going on in the town. Uh, if you want to take, um, for instance, the con construction report. In that report, we're told how many, uh, what, what, uh, what construction permits are taking out year to date, how much, uh, how much fees the town has collected. 
uh, so we know what's going on. And the police deport the, the police yeah, yes. uh, department report how many criminals were apprehended. Well, I, yeah. all that. Yeah, sort of. I mean, that would be. I, I don't want to use the word criminals. Uh, well, you know. you know what I mean. Right. Police activity. Police, police activities. activities. Right. All right. Um, one thing uh, I was going to ask. Go ahead. Is, Take your time. Um, today I saw. Uh, I don't know how to approach this question. Is there any uh, an official of the township? Is he allowed to work for the fire department during his regular hours? Are you alluding to if we have a, a DPW worker that is called to go to no, the fire? No, I didn't mean a DPW. I meant an official of the township is listed as an official of the township mm -hmm. of Little Falls. Whether that, that will be building inspector, mm -hmm. fire inspector, or any inspector. I'm, I'm happy. Mayor. Sure. Uh, the short answer is yes, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you why. We have a volunteer fire department in this town that during the day, Many of them are at work. Many of them do not work in Little Falls. And when there is a call during the day, I actually encourage any of the Little Falls employees, whether they are DPW employees, whether they are employed in this building, to respond to fires in order to assist the public. I think that part of what everybody that is employed by this town, part of their responsibility is providing a service to the public in Little Falls. And that includes responding to a fire call. And I will tell you why. Because again, oftentimes during the day, a lot of our volunteer firemen are not in Little Falls. Uh, the ability for a DPW employee or an individual working in this building to respond to a fire is much greater than many other volunteers. And if it were my house burning, I can tell you, I, will, I don't care who it is, that's responding to put out that fire. I just want them there five minutes ago. So whoever can get to a truck and get to a call as fast as possible, I, I strongly encourage it. So it is certainly something that is permitted, whether it be, again, any employee of this municipality in any capacity. I, I couldn't agree with you more. The funny thing is that I sat in front of the fire station and there was no trucks coming in or going out. It just, uh, and I, I watched it for about 10 minutes. And there was nothing going on. The the uh, the township official was in full gear, just talking to somebody else. And my, since I recognized the the township official, I said, "I wonder who is doing his job in the meantime." Obviously, nobody. I agree with you that uh, that if your house was on fire, if there is uh, an emergency call, a fire call. Everybody should respond, whoever is available, whoever is close by should respond, whether it's a township official or a doctor. Well, I but, guess to say, I don't know the circumstances of that particular incident. I don't know if they just returned from a fire call five minutes before and were talking to someone. I can tell you, I don't know that hanging out in fire gear, if you weren't responding to or training or doing something fire related is the most comfortable thing in the world. I don't know why you would want to hang out uh, with extra gear on. but. Uh, my, uh, yeah. But running into someone and talking to them for five minutes after returning from a fire call, maybe, again, I, I, don't, I don't know the time, the day, the circumstances, so I can't really answer that. It was around 2.30. Today? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, 3.10, three, 3.10. Three, three ten, three ten. Mr. Fernandez, we take everything seriously here, as you know, but we'll, we'll look into the matter, okay? Right. We'll get back to now you and we'll look into the matter. Curious because... Uh, I we, think we're not well, gonna, is he here? Council President, yes. I can answer that. Go ahead, okay. Mayor. 314 today, there was a fire call. Okay. So around 310 puts that right around the exact time. And just so you're also aware, a truck cannot leave with more with, with, with manpower of one individual on it. They need some manpower to a truck. Yeah. So again, if it were around 310, he, or you know, around that time, 314, yeah, that. he may have been the first one there waiting to see if anybody else was showing up and ready to go, but your timing does perfectly correspond to a call that was in today. I just, I couldn't understand why. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Raymond Kostraski, 170 Denado Drive. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just a little thing, update the bushes that I told you about before. Still the same, nothing has changed. Okay. It really, uh, 
Mr. Cushio through the mayor's office. Can we address this problem once and for all? Because it's just, and they're still not to apparently to set. It's it's still black. It's still black. It, it's it's a three feet high ordinance. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. It's so, a, on a corner property. Right. In front of the house is three feet, three feet. and it's That's supposed to be fifty fifty fence. Right. But they've got two big giant bushes, so right. you're basically almost in the intersection where you can really see what's coming. Right. And we don't want that. We don't want motorists uh, motorists to be uh, blindsided by uh, bushes. That's why the ordinance is in effect on the corner to be at three yeah. feet. And the only reason I know because I have my fence done, so I know what the ordinance right. is. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing again that to our attention. I'm sorry that wasn't addressed. Is there anyone else that would like to come before us this evening? Anyone on? Zoom. That was, okay, thank you. Seeing no one else come before us, can I have a motion to close up? I'm sorry. Council. I should have talked this earlier when you uh, dealt with the, uh, the fire ordinance 1417. The postponement? We need a motion to postpone it? Yeah, a motion to yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. My fault. No, it's my fault. Okay, okay so we're going to go. Let's. Can we close the public session and go back to that? Okay. I have a motion to close the public comment. So moved. moved by Councilmember Vincherry. Second. Second by Councilmember Quadri. All those in favor to close the public comment, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. Let's circle back to Ordinance 1417. Can I have a motion to table 1417, please? So moved. So moved by Councilmember Havlitz. Second. Second by uh, Councilmember uh, Vincherry. Uh, Mrs. Krause, call, is that a roll call? Okay, Mrs. Uh, Krause, call the roll to the table, ordinance 1417. Council Member Havlitz? Yes. Council Member Kawadi? Yes. Council Member Seaver? Yes. Council Member Venturi? Yes. Council President Scola? Yes, I apologize to the public for uh, overseeing that. Can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Moved by Council Member Venturi, second by Council Member Seaver. All those in uh, favor to adjourn this meeting, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed to the motion, signify by saying nay. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to staff for helping us get through this meeting. This meeting is now closed.